Noel Pearson, welcome to 7.30. Great to be here with you. Back in 2000, 250,000 Australians walked across the Sydney Harbour Bridge to support reconciliation. A skywriter wrote, sorry, in the sky above them. Is that the kind of mass mobilisation that is required now to secure a win for the Yes campaign? We're leading towards that. I've been around the countryside, down to Tasmania, in Queensland, all over Brisbane, Sunshine Coast. The sense I'm having is that build up. This is the great build up towards um, a positive result here. I'm feeling it in my bones. I'm talking to Liberals, I'm talking to Greens, I'm talking to Labor people. So I'm sensing, I'm sensing that this thing is gaining momentum and that we're heading towards um, the Australian people being very clear that we will make this change to the Constitution. That's obviously uh, partly just your individual experience. You're talking about a sense that you have because the polling is saying something different. What is yes. it that you think is changing because it's not what the polls tell us? Oh, well, one of the really beautiful things for me is we're constantly told by the pollsters that the plus 55 grumpy old men and grumpy old women, they're not so grumpy about this. In fact, they're the ones coming out to these events. They're the ones who are, are thinking about their children and grandchildren. They're thinking about the future and what we might as a generation leave for the rest of the country. And um, so I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised by that. Young people are, are, are very much, you can be pretty confident that young Australians are telling me they're intending, they're intending to vote yes. Let me just talk briefly about the Productivity Commission yesterday because it has given your campaign something of a boost. It was giving its, um, its assessment of how the government is going on its commitment to closing the gap. It was a pretty terrible verdict. The verdict is it's failing. Mm. Um, failing because it's not uh, listening properly to Indigenous groups on how to tackle disadvantage. Just briefly, how would a voice change that? You know, Eleanor Roosevelt famously said, there's nothing that government can do for people that the people are unwilling to do for themselves. I'm a great believer in that. It means that people are going to make the change on the ground, supported by the government. The government's role is to enable and support, not to do, because government can't do. It's the families, it's the communities, it's the community level organisations that, are, that have got to produce the actions that lead to the closing of the gap. And so it's absolutely no surprise that the Productivity Commission has, has said very plainly, we are not succeeding with closing the gap. I just want to, I want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening in politics, though, because still it's clear that uh, those, the Liberal side of politics that's campaigning against The Voice is cutting through. Now, former PM John Howard said that one of the failings here is that the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, has not commanded the heights of the debate in any meaningful way. Do you see any truth to that argument? No, I don't. I think we've got to be honest about the 12 years of... Um, coalition government at that time. But he's saying there's not enough leadership or the quality of the leadership coming from Albanese isn't of, a, isn't of a high enough standard. I think the fact that we're going to enter 33 days of intense campaigning for The Voice, I don't think it's sustainable for, for us to spend three months of intense national campaigning on the case for The Voice. I think the Prime Minister's announcement that 33 days out from the decided date of the referendum, we're going to see a very intense education of the electorate and answering the electorate's concerns about this. The debate needs to actually come back to what are the words that we're going to put in the Constitution. And uh, every Australian needs to read those words. I doubt if all of the people who've got opinions and who are debating this thing around the countryside have actually read the words. Well, well, let's talk about that for a minute because that is really at the uh, at the basis of what uh, John Howard and Tony Abbott are arguing. Um, so uh, just a quick question on that. How much do you think they are influencing Peter Dutton, just before I come back to those words? Oh, I, I don't know. I really don't know what's happening on the conservative side. 
Um, you used to know. Uh, you, you remember that John Howard was the one that kicked off this mm -hmm. whole process in 2007. And, uh, you know, he's, he's now uh, an opponent, I assume, of The Voice. Um, I don't think that that's going to be decisive. Well, let's talk about the, the words, though, because that's where he's making his case. And he said that The Voice would be as it stands at the moment, that is with that phrase, that it may make representations to Parliament, so the audience is clear what we're talking about. He says that the voice will become a cockpit of conflict with standoffs between what the voice wants and what the government of the day is willing to do. In essence, is that the hardest argument you have to confront? Absolutely not. Professor Anne Toomey, told the Sydney Town Hall function we had last week. And it was an eye-opener for me too, for somebody who's been around this debate and, 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 and around the phrasing of the amendment for a very long time. I heard with great clarity Professor Toomey's explanation that making representations is the universal democratic process. Citizens make representations to their parliaments and to their governments. That, was, that, that is what everybody does. That takes us straight to the core of the Conservative argument about separatism. John Howard, Tony Abbott, Peter Dutton have all argued that the voice will endow special rights based on race. How do you respond to the argument that the voice will divide Australia? Well, how can you say it's going to divide Australia when Indigenous people are excluded from the Constitution? The Constitution is incomplete. And the people who are excluded from recognition in the Constitution, in John Howard's own words in 2007, right? The people who are excluded are Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. So this referendum actually completes the Constitution. That takes us to recognition. And what is the step that then takes us to the voice? Well, recognition through a voice. What do we, what do we recognise? What is the substantive recognition? What is the practical recognition? It is to hear the voices of Indigenous people in relation to laws and policies that are made about them. And why is that so important? Because we're going to get better policies. When people have a say over the policies that affect them, we're going to get better results. We're going to save money. Our money is going to be more productive. The Productivity Commission has told me that after 26 years of coalition governments, 21 out of the last 26 years have been coalition governments led by John Howard and led by Malcolm Turnbull and led by Tony Abbott and led by Scott Morrison, in those 21 years, we have not made progress in closing the gap. I just want to ask you a quick question about yourself. You have been, you have made attacks against other, against the Indigenous supporters of the No case. Those attacks have been biting. Do you think that you hurt your own campaign with those comments? Oh, uh, the, you know, it's it, getting the thing through the parliament was not easy. It was never going to be easy. Everybody said it would be impossible. We've got it through the parliament. We're now put the parlementary process that, behind that, us. No, Pearson, is that you admitting that you went too far with those um, attacks under pressure? Well, I suppose people might have done it more gently than I, I would have. I did it in the way I did. Um, the important thing now is that in the conversation with the Australian people, we can only appeal to goodness. I just wanted to ask you this. Earlier this year, you contemplated the consequences of defeat. You said a failed referendum will kill reconciliation. What would be left in that void if it fails? Well, I'm not contemplating that now. You know, everything is directed towards victory and we'll, ne we'll leave no train station unattended. We'll leave no community forum un unspoken. And we've got to get that out there in the streets, in the suburbs, in the cities, in the country towns. And we're going to have a message of hope and opportunity for the country. And that's, that's all that can win it, win it for, for, for the country, for the whole country and for Indigenous people. A message of hope and opportunity. And we'll leave no stone unturned in that process. Wherever two or three are gathered in the name of the voice, we will be there.
because we have to be there. We have to pull out all stops because this is our best hope yet. Noel Pearson, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much, Sarah.